Cream right here. Today we have Eric Freelander, who is a professional soccer player at Livon FC. Eric, how's it going? Going well, man. You, you did pretty well with the pronunciation. Um, going well, man. You're out here in Latvia. I uh, appreciate you having me on. Uh, like I said before, when we talked, uh, you know, I'm seven hours ahead, so it's kind of tough with the scheduling, but glad to be here, man. Absolutely. I don't think I got the club, club fully pronounced properly. Can you, can you pronounce it for us? Yes, yeah, Saldus Livon. Amazing, amazing. Um, so it's honestly amazing to have you on as well. You know, I've been, you know, I've known of you on Instagram before even starting a podcast. So it's excited to have you on the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you do great work in the soccer space and, and you're out in Europe. So, you know, I want to just dive straight into it. Yeah. Um, before we get into it, I always like to ask people this. Uh, I know this is your podcast, but. Um, you know, when people see my, my social media, like, they get this first impression right away, you know? Uh, so I, I ask people who become my friends or even when I go out on dates with girls and they see my profile before, like, what's your first impression of my um, profile, how I uh, behave on social media, stuff like that? I think it's interesting. Absolutely. I think this is, this is different how we start the podcast, but absolutely. I think um you have a strong presence you you know you're not being entertained by social media you're actually providing valuable content into the soccer space which is very valuable to other um, users or profiles or people on the platform that want to go pro you are a professional yourself um so you're credible i mean i, th I think it's absolutely um again very valuable what you do on social media and i used to watch your stuff before and, and learn get some good nuggets from you um, with saying that, I think overall good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, yeah, that's the goal, man. I mean, the goal is to be transparent and provide uh, as much useful and honest information. I try to talk to like my 13, 14 year old self, you know, obviously sometimes I use more higher language and, and stuff like that. But the goal is to kind of be this mentor that I wish I had. So. Glad to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you know for you to have the confidence and dive into yourself fully and share that online is very powerful. And and people, you know, they they can feel that they they can receive it from you. So I think it's amazing. With saying that, you know, I'm I'm glad to have you on the podcast and you know to share a little bit more. I'm not sure if you've done this on your own podcast or on any other podcast, but let's dig into you. You know. Um, can you take us back in time and share how you got involved in, into the beautiful game? Yeah. Yeah. So I um, started playing at about age four. Uh, I grew up in Long Island, New York in, in Merrick. Um, so that's about 40 minutes from Manhattan. Uh, yeah, I started playing when I was four years old, 28 now. So about 25 years. Um, 24 years. Well, I got to go back to school to do some math. Um, but yeah, I've uh, been playing for 24 years and, you know, typical American kid. I played multiple sports, uh, basketball, lacrosse, baseball, even got into a bit of American football. Um, and then at about age 13, uh, I was playing at a, at a club team. Um, I think it was in Lake Grove in, in New York. And I had a, a coach from England come up to me and my dad afterwards and asked like if I play any other sports and I told him that I played basketball at a decent level. Um, I played baseball at a decent level. And he said, you know, Eric, uh, I think you got a lot of potential in the game. If you really want to take this to the college level and maybe even professional level, which I think you could, uh, I advise you just playing one sport. And uh, I kind of took that home and really thought about it. And um, I really, I enjoy b basketball and soccer, football. Uh, which I call it now since I spent eight years in Europe. I enjoyed those two the most. And, you know, I saw the most potential in myself. I'm not the tallest. Uh, I saw it in, in football. So I kind of, yeah, got got really serious after that talk for a couple of years. Um, and, yeah, I played on multiple club teams throughout throughout my youth career and then, you know, took it into college. Um, and then did one year in college and then I've been in, in Europe now for about eight years. Yeah, that's amazing. 
with saying that, you know, what college did you go to and, and what did you study? Yeah, so I, um, I did one year at the University of Buffalo. Unfortunately, we were playing Division One in the MAC conference, which was decent. We were playing against Akron, West Virginia. Um, they they've disbanded the team, unfortunately, to put most of the money. College soccer, um, sad, but but that's that's the reality. So yeah, I went over there. I was studying pre dentistry. Uh, because my mom wanted me to do that. And, you know, I've always liked to keep my teeth nice, like nice teeth on girls, but it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I've always been into the body. Uh, really, I love biology. I love physiology and biomechanics. And I've been like, I've been studying it myself uh, since the age of 15. Um, just doing self study. And then basically what happened was I did one year at the University of Buffalo. Um, did decent there. I mean, I, I would say I played about, uh, 60 to 70 percent of the games about 40 to 50 percent from start some good players there uh, actually an active guy right now who's doing really well in the USL Russell Ciceroni I played with him uh, he's playing at the Riverhounds now uh, great guy really hard worker um, and it was honestly it was the best social year of my life like tons of good friends always things to do always people to hang out with but, you know, even though it was Division I football, Division I soccer, I didn't – I felt like I was losing my focus a little bit. Like I was going out a bit too much, um, mm -hmm. wasn't eating as well. I was, you know uh, – I was having good fun, but I wasn't – I've always been pretty focused since the age of uh, 17. Uh, I've been really like disciplined guy, very structured, very into my routines and habits and stuff like that. And I noticed myself kind of veering off because – I kind of got sucked into the scene of, uh, of going out and that's how it is. I feel like, you know, in, in the first year of college, you see all this, this shining light and this glamour, but then you realize people are doing this, you know, day in, day out, and it really gets old. Um, so the, the month before I actually had gone out to Buffalo, I went out to, to Germany for a month to prepare uh, as a preseason, just to taste a little bit of European football. I did it with this exchange program. They have yearly programs, monthly programs. And it was just, I basically trained with a team in the sixth league in the Landesliga in Germany, which may sound like a low level, uh, you know, with, you know, the sixth division. But there are some players who can play there because they've come down and, you know, they're just playing for fun. Uh, they played in, you know, third Bundesliga, second Bundesliga. So I, I got a taste of European football and, one of the biggest things that I realized the difference between Europeans and Americans was that the football brain, you know, uh, football brain, the decision making, the technique on and off the ball, uh, tactics, how comfortable they are, they are on the ball. Um, and then I kind of said, what can I bring that's different as an American? And, you know, it's changing now for Europeans, a perspective on our Americans, since we got a lot of players balling out. But Back then, you know, and it still is, they, they know that we're physically very good. We're hard workers. We're uh, willing to, we learn well, we're, we're willing to listen, uh, and we'll give our all for the team. But, yeah, after that taste of football, you know, there's a couple of teams in the sixth division want to assign me, uh, but I had already committed to Buffalo. So I did my, my year at Buffalo, and I don't regret it at all. Made a lot of really good friends, had a really good time, got a, got a little taste of the college life. Um, and I knew it really wasn't for me. Uh, you know, I, I always wanted to be a pro. Like I said before, you know, I, I got that tip from that English coach at 13. And I've always been a big fan of European football. Um, so I always wanted to play in Europe. And basically, I went back after my freshman year at Buffalo and uh, did the same type of program for a month. And I was like, all right, let me do it one more month and let me go back to my sophomore season. Went back. Uh, two of the teams that I was training with in the sixth league got uh, promoted to the fifth league in Germany and uh, went over there and they wanted to sign me. And um, I remember the exact decision that I made. I think it was all, um, the end of July. I was going to go back to Buffalo for preseason. I was walking with my buddy, Aiden Tucker, uh, along the promenade in Nuremberg, Germany. And I said, I was, I think, 20, 19 or 20. And I said to him, you know, unfortunately, I can't do this uh, myself. I'm too old. Uh, my goal is to, you know, 
I want to marry a girl in Europe and I'll have my kid do it. And then uh, that night I like thought about it. I was up until like 3 a.m. And I was like, you know what, man? You only live once. You know, it's a cliche, corny saying, but if you actually embody that and you make decisions in, in the right way off of that, it could serve you well. So I always said you only live once. And there was a guy, uh, a kid on my club team when I was about 17. His dad always said, you can always be a doctor, lawyer, dentist at any age, but you can't always be a pro footballer. So I took that into consideration and my stepdad as well. He's always been a huge supporter of mine. And I, I questioned, I was like, should I go back and finish my degree, the typical American route, or should I chase this dream in Europe? And I was like, you know what, I'm going to take my chances now and, and chase this dream. And I, I remember that night I emailed the coach at Buffalo and I told him I'm not coming back. Um, and I ended up signing for this team in the fifth league in, in Germany. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's when my, when my journey started and I, I spent three years in Germany. Um, I w I first did it with this program, um, for marketing reasons and for the way they treated me. I don't want to display their name to your audience or mine. So I'm not going to say who it was, uh, but basically I would say I give them a little bit of credit. They gave me the platform, but I, you know, took like I always try to tell the players on on my social media accounts. You got to take your development within your own hands. You got to take complete responsibility of your development and not rely on outside sources, whether that's coaches, parents, whoever it is to motivate you or to get your connections, your network. You got to do it yourself. It's all on you. And once you realize that it's all on you you become free. So after that first year, I, I said, okay, I'm going to become fluent in German so I could sort things out. I could get trials myself. And that's basically what I did uh, for, for three years in Germany. And, and it was a great learning experience. Uh, I really learned a lot. I ended up becoming fluent in German, which is helpful, will hopefully be helpful in the, in the future in business. Um, and I really kind of um, lamented my, my routines and habits uh, because Germans are very structured. They do things right um, many times. Uh, and, and I learned a lot how to structure my life uh, based, I mean, on that society with my own tweaks, you know. Yeah, that's really impressive. Ger German is one of the hardest languages I've heard to learn um, yeah. aside from like Russian and a couple other languages, I think. Yeah, and Hebrew. Hebrew is, I tried Hebrew when I was in Israel, man. And yeah, you know, I'm a pretty hard worker and I don't like to give up, man, but I tried seven times and I was like, there's no chance. So <laughs> yeah, man. Amazing. I mean, there's, so there's, there's a couple of things I want to track back a bit. Really good points. You, you, you mentioned that being in that loop and within the university realm, you know, what advice would you give to students or student athletes that are in that space that may, may hear this right now when this is up, what advice would you give to them to get out of that? You know, weekend comes, party, drink, have fun, one day to get out that loop. What advice would you give? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. I've actually gotten multiple questions about that from my, you know, I have some one-on-one -on -one clients who are going through that right now. Uh, I wrote a pretty big article about it and it's, it's, it's very, um, there's a couple points and then I would say it's individual based. So as we both know, uh, being connected, being well connected with your teammates is very important. Having that bond is important on and off the pitch. You know, it's, it's not an individual game. You're not in martial arts. You're not in tennis or golf. You need other players around you to trust you, to like you, uh, and to get along with you. So with that being said, I, I think you got to judge your person. This, this may get bit in depth, but I think you got to judge your personality type. I'm the personality type where I'm either all in or, or all out, you know, uh, and that's how I was when I was younger. I've changed now, but I was all in or all out. So it was either I went out and I really enjoyed myself or I didn't go out at all. So, you know, after a couple of times going out and really enjoying myself, I was like, man, I just feel like crap the next day. And I was like, this, this is just not for me. You know, uh, I've always been about my performance and feeling good. And yeah, you're having a good time in the moment, but afterwards it's, you know, it's difficult. But I would say if you could, my advice to, to student athletes is if you really have the dream of being a professional athlete, professional footballer, um, or being a top le level player on your college team, you have to have 
that internal strength and integrity to trust in yourself and your actions. And, you know, if your teammates want you to get absolutely smashed, you say, no, I'm only going to have one or two drinks. I'm going to enjoy the night. You know, I, I don't feel good the next day when I get smashed. And if they don't respect that, then you got to make that decision, whether you leave the place or you just stand your ground. And I think when you stand your ground and you constantly stay consistent with your actions and you don't say, okay, one night I'm going to only do one to two. And then the next night you get smashed, then people will start to respect you. And most importantly, if you produce those results on the field, they're going to say, all right, well, you know, Rick's only taking one or two drinks tonight. I'm getting smashed. He's starting. I'm on the bench. Maybe I should do what he does. So kind of um, being a role model in that sense and, and being a leader uh, in that sense would be my advice. And, and that's what I would tell to my younger college self. And I would try to tell to younger students. And I'm not saying that maybe you don't want to be a professional. So that's on you. But I do think that it's important to go out once in a while, have fun with your, with your boys, have fun with your teammates, really connect. Uh, that was very big in Germany, t- that team building aspect. Um, and yeah, really be willing to, to, you know, bond with your teammates and integrate with your teammates, but make your own decisions. You know, um, I'm sure you've been told by teachers and parents not to be peer pressured into things, but it's easier said than done within the moment. But if you really could look yourself in the mirror and you tell yourself what you really want and you can display that day after day, people always talk about manifestation. If you really are about those actions consistently, that stuff is going to come through in your life. And it's not just going to fall into your lap. It's based off of your decisions. So, yeah, long-winded answer of saying I would I would not sit in your room and hang out by yourself and play video games. I would go out, integrate with the boys, have fun, crack jokes. But you don't need to get smashed to connect with your teammates. Uh, make the right decisions for your mind, for your body, and for your future. Absolutely. Great Great points. You, you know, coming a little bit back to, you know, you mentioned, I think it was your stepdad that said, hey, look, you could always go back and get that, uh, that you know, university degree and become a doctor, dentist, whatever you want to, you know, want to be, which is, I've heard it before. It's great advice as well. Um, and then I, I thought that was pretty funny was the comment that you made about marrying a, a European and then having your kid do it. But, you know, after thinking, um, the turnaround was, you know, you only live once, I got to do it myself. And I, I relate to you on, on a lot of topics, but in that sense, specifically, at that point, is, is um, I just want to share, with, share this with you, is that I had that same situ- um, scenario, per se, but yeah. uh, I was like, there, got, there has to be a different avenue, and I, I kind of more so chose to, like, just, let's see the owner route, let's see if we could get in, and um, yeah, I just wanted to just drop this on the record, but I, I, I love that you shared that. That was amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a decision you have to make. You know, it's it's a tough decision um, that you have to make. Uh, and I always say go with your gut, you know. And if, if you really want to get a little analytical with it and, and really plan, sit down, write the pros and cons, uh, whether you're making a decision to go back to college and play or we're trying to, you know, play professionally, you know, sit down, write the pros and cons, and then you can make your decision. Yeah, great advice. What, um, you know, what year did you sign your first professional contract? Um, so, so this was, this was considered semi-professional, this fifth league in Germany. Uh, I signed my first pro contract in, in Sweden, in the, um, division one, which is the third tier of Swedish football. I think it was 2017 or 2018. I was 23. Yeah. So it was, which is about, yeah. 2018, 2019. Did you, during that signing process, did you have any agency to help you sign or? Yeah, good question. So, so like I said before, I, I took responsibility in Germany um, by learning German and I started, I called, I was my own agent. You know, I would go on soccerway.com and literally sit there and blast teams by email, uh, by phone and I would speak to them and they would respect an American speaking German and they would tell me to come down for a trial. And that's how I did it myself for those three years in Germany. Um, and then I came back and I did a showcase in Florida. I think it was 2017, 2018. 
And, uh, you know, about 100 players there. We played 11 v 11 games. And there were, a couple, there were some interest from European teams, but they already knew I was in Europe. Uh, so I ended up kind of connecting with agents instead because I was like, I'm already in Europe. I know how to do this myself. I just need some connects, you know. So I connected with this guy. He brought me over to Sweden. Um, and I went on trial with four, uh, I think about four or five teams. Um, more of the story is, uh, all of them were interested in me. All of them wanted to sign me except one team. Uh, and I went with the team that just felt the best, like the locker room felt the best. I thought I would have most potential to play there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I used him as that connection and in Sweden, they speak excellent English. So that was a really good experience. Um, but like I said to you before, it's hard to get a visa in Sweden. So that was a bit of the struggle there. But um, no, I, I really enjoyed my time in Sweden as well. Nice. What did, you know, signing your first professional contract do to you mentally to yourself? Did it boost your confidence? What things happened when that, when you put pen to paper? Yeah, I mean, it was, I remember the, the, the speech the coach had to me. Uh, there were seven guys on trial. We played a, a trial match uh, and he, he brought me in last into the office and he was like, you know, Friedlander saved the best for last. And, you know, when he was saying that to me, I just, you know, it was good feelings. Um, and yeah, he, he told me, you know, they wanted to bring me in. They wanted to sign me. And, uh, I went home for about a month or two. It was, it was the break. And then I came back, uh, in February, signed the contract and yeah, it felt unreal, really good feelings, but I don't know. I'm the type of guy and maybe I should improve this on, upon myself, but like, I just, all right, goal hit got to keep working, you know, what's, what's next, you know, got to, can't be complacent. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was proud of myself and, and, you know, really, really enjoyed it, but I was like, all right, what's next? Uh, we got training for today and, uh, yeah, that was really it. Got it. And you mentioned that getting the visa was, you know, one of the hardest parts. How'd you go about navigating that? Yeah. So the team did it for me. The team did it for me, um, for the year. There's tons of paperwork they have to do. Uh, they have to pay you a certain amount. So that was all sorted. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. They always, even a bunch of friends who still go over there to Sweden, they give a bit of trouble. Um, you know, th there's ins and outs to it, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed my time in Sweden. Uh, but yeah, it was tough to stay there. Like in Germany, they give you some more free time. Uh, some other countries, they give you some more, you know, visa free time. But over there, once your deadline's done, you got to get out or you can get a ban. And I'll talk about it uh, later. But, you know, I, I almost got banned for five years from Europe. So you got to be quite careful about it. Wow. That's intense. Yeah. I mean, you're out there playing soccer, too. It's like you're not even doing <laughs> anything wrong. It's crazy. Exactly. Um, so... Eric, what are three things that you would share with the next generation that are growing up right now that want to become professional uh, soccer players or footballers? Um, okay. Good question. Um, the first one is uh, you have to look yourself in the mirror and truly ask yourself, do you really want it for yourself or are you doing it to impress friends, impress family? Uh, put it on social media, put it on Instagram, on TikTok. That's the number one thing. One, and, and once you decide that it's for you, you're all in. You got to be all in. And you got to be all in, I would say, for at least three years. So with that comes a lot of things. The first thing is before you do all that, I would highly advise you work and you make money and you have a good amount of savings in your bank because it's not a cheap thing to do this, to travel all around. Uh, yeah, you get paid to play. Um, but in the beginning, you have, to, uh, you have to travel. You have to get Airbnbs, hotels, flights, food. In the beginning, when you're first chasing this contract, you're not provided everything. So you got to, like I said before, take responsibility for your own development of your own career and save up money and then truly ask yourself if you want it. And once you decide that, you're going to have to realize there's going to be a lot of sacrifices along the way. You're going to miss family weddings, family vacations. You're going to miss um, funerals. You're going to miss 
parties. There's going to be a lot of things that you're going to miss. And if you're willing to do that for this dream of playing professional football, then it could be for you. So that's the first tip. The second tip is you have to back up your dream and your uh, words of playing professional with action. You obviously have to prepare from a physical standpoint, from a technical standpoint, from every single standpoint to bring value and be an asset to the team that you want to sign with. And then you have to be able to build relationships, build connections with people, because that's also going to take you further in the game, much further than you may think. Um, And I think in terms of that, build connections and relationships, not looking to get things out of it. Build connections and relationships just to be friends with someone. Like, don't say, oh, yeah, uh, I'm going to become friends with him so he can get me a trial there. Or I'm going to become friends with him so his dad can get me a job. No, just be a good human. And people will see that and feel that. Third thing I would say is, is be, be a student of life and be a student of the game. So that means you, there's always more to learn. There's always more to learn from, from new people, from different people. So I'm going to, let me go back, be a student of life and then also be kind to everyone. So being a student of of life and the game means you're always willing to learn. You're always willing to do more. You're not complacent because it's so hard to get a spot on a team and make money playing this game that you have to do whatever it takes to get there. And that comes with constantly learning, constantly improving yourself. And if you develop that mindset, you will get to where you want to get to. Obviously, you have to have the abilities, but a big component of of becoming a pro is the mindset. You know, I have a quick story about one of my buddies who is coming to Europe. Uh, He just signed his first professional contract in American football, but I give him the same exact advice that I would give to you guys and girls and my audience and that I would give to myself. I was like, you know, he tried twice uh, he went out, played university uh, in England. He did well, ended up getting injured. And then he was back home just, you know, hitting up teams, messaging teams to get an opportunity. And I was like, bro, honestly, what I would do if I was you, you is buy a ticket to Romania where he ended up signing, buy a ticket to Romania, wherever these teams are, and just say, I'm on ground. I'm here. All I want to do is train with the team. Can you give me an opportunity to train with the team? And that just show, and I was like, dude, if you do that, Many, many times you're going to get your chance. You're going to get your opportunity. And and that's what he got. So it's all about perseverance. It's all about grit. It's all about having that mentality of, like I said before, give yourself at least three years because it it may happen in in two months, may happen in one year, may happen in two years. It may happen in two years and 10 months. You don't know. So you got to give yourself a certain amount of time and you got to stick to that path and be consistent with it. You can't veer off it. Um, So yeah, those are my three tips, long-winded answer. And then, like I said, always be kind to everyone, Um, no matter who it is. I always believe be kind enough, be be as kind to the janitor as you are to the CEO. You could always learn something from someone. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, when you take action and you go to these countries, um, you know, things happen magically. You know, the universe is working for you. and, you know, it's interesting, you know, you may be holding a U.S. passport being in Romania, but there are things that can happen to help you get that work visa so you can get that job. Um, yeah, so take action. Where can players reach out to you? Um, so they can reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, but that I would say I'll give you my email. They can reach out to me on email. That's probably the best place because my DMs get flooded. I really don't have the time to answer them. Um, so yeah, email, you know, my first letter, E last name, Friedlander spelled like Friedlander 94 at gmail.com. So if people want to reach out, uh, I'm always willing to answer over there. Amazing. And I just want quickly want to plug in, uh, Dennis from Sheen Sports. You got this connected. Shout out to you. Appreciate it. Um, and then again, uh, Eric, thank you for being on. There's a couple of fun questions that I want to ask you. Um, they're speed questions. You gotta, you gotta blaze through them. Is that cool? Let's hit it, it, man. All right, let's do it. Uh, so, who's your favorite team? Liverpool. Favorite player? Uh, Cruz. Tony Cruz. Favorite cleats? Nike Tiempo Premiers. 
Favorite food? Steak. Favorite artist musically? Drake. Messi or Ronaldo? It's a tough one. I like them both. I mean, let's gotta choose, ask. Gotta choose one. <laughs> yeah, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Um, the first team you would pick in FIFA. Who's your go-to? If you still Liverpool. play, I don't know. Liverpool. I, I don't. I don't play, but Liverpool <laughs> for sure. Um, would you rather score two goals in 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 a game or one goal and one assist? Two goals, man. There's no no greater feeling than a goal. Would you rather score a free kick or a PK last minute goal to win your team the game? PK last minute win the game. Uh, and the last one, if you were a coach and you were able to sub in any player in history to win you the game, who would it be? Zidane. Zidane. The French man. Yes. Um, I know we got a couple of minutes here. I mean, we'll close. I guess we'll close. Was there anything that you wanted to add in or just last, last words? Um, yeah, I'll do a quick plug for myself. I'm uh, starting an app. You know, uh, I've been building it for two years now. Honestly, been building it, I would say, for 13 years since I've really been studying the game and, and playing the game intensely. Uh, and it's it's an app where if you have a phone with an internet connection, all you need is a ball, uh, a wall would be helpful, uh, and you can get a great session. In. And, and the whole goal of the app is, you know, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, but, uh, you know, it's, it's quite expensive for some players. You know, I work with a lot of pros. Uh, I need at least a six-month commitment, so I charge a good amount of money. And I saw a lot of younger players, you know, between, you know, 13 and 18 reaching out, and I couldn't help them. So I said to myself, what can I do to help these players? So the app's going to be affordable. I think it'll be about $25 a month. Uh, you'll get a new session every single week. You'll get nutrition tips from me. Uh, pro tips from players I had on my podcast, lifestyle mindset tips. It it's honestly got everything you need to get to the next level in football for only about twenty five dollars. So, nice. yeah, that's exciting. When is it coming out? It was supposed to be launched February. So let's see, man. I hope I hope by September. I hope. Yeah, I hope so too, man. That's exciting. Let me know when that drops. We'll get some marketing behind that. Some posts, of course. Uh, 